So now that polls are showing that Hillary Clinton loses a substantial amount of millennial voters to third party candidates, she is fighting like hell to win us over. So seemingly she is taking a short break from courting neoconservatives and is desperately trying to now court us millennials. Now, is her desperation showing? Absolutely, but that's good. I don't want a candidate to be arrogant. I want them to look like they're desperate to get our votes because you should be desperate to get our votes. Many Democrats made the mistake thinking that, you know, she would have this demographic on lock no matter what. And this is why she chose to run away from us and do that right wing pivot for the general election right after Bernie Sanders conceded and endorsed her. She thought, well, look, Bernie endorsed me, so I'm done. I don't have to do anything else. Wash my hands. I can go and try to court Republicans now. So she started Republicans for Hillary and Mormons for Hillary, just doing things that are completely a waste of time. And she ignored us. And now she is really having to make up a lot of ground. And she should have been doing this from the start. So what do you think her two strategies are to court us over? Now, one of them is to pander, that's obvious, but the second one is to appeal to us with policy, which is the right strategy, but again, there's this untrustworthy problem that she may not be able to ever overcome. So I'm going to talk about both of these strategies and give you my opinion as to what she should be doing to win over more millennials. I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. How do you do, fellow kids? So when it comes to the pandering, almost immediately after it was revealed that she doesn't have millennials on lock, she penned an article for Mike.com titled, Here's what millennials have taught me. Oh, it's just extremely cringeworthy and left a terrible taste in my mouth. So she states, your generation is the most open, diverse, and entrepreneurial generation in our country's history. And if we work together to take on the barriers that are holding you back and unleash your full potential, that won't just improve your lives. It'll make our entire country stronger. From the first days of this campaign, you have shared the problems that keep you up at night and the hopes that get you up in the morning. You've reached for the opportunities that come with a college education at the highest rates of any generation in history, but faced with ballooning tuition costs and crushing student debt like never before. Many of you entered the workforce during the worst recession since the Great Depression, and you've come of age during two deadly, costly wars in the Middle East. Which I helped start, but she didn't say that. And yet, despite all these challenges, you've never given up. Not even close. This is really bad. You know, it, it's just, she's pandering way too much. It comes off as, how do you do, fellow kids, to me? And look, we don't care about these meaningless platitudes. We care about the policies. Now, to be fair to her, she did get to some policies towards the end of the article. She talked about tuition-free colleges, uh, paid family leave, and uh, what else? She talked about uh, jobs for millennials, which is a problem for us. But... I mean, nobody believes her because she's only talking about these things now that she wants our votes. So, I mean, in this article, she basically tried to pull a Bernie Sanders, but it came off as really, really disingenuous to me. Now, here's what else Hillary Clinton did to appeal to millennials in terms of pandering. She went on Between Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis. And look, even though it was funny and I enjoyed watching it, I mean, it's not something that's going to help her earn my vote. It's clearly pandering. It's lacking in policy substance. Again, it was funny, but this isn't what you need to do. So, I mean, in terms of winning over millennials, she seems clueless. I mean, she has no idea besides pandering and trying to bring out Katy Perry and Lena Dunham, people who we don't like. Uh, it, I just feel like <laughs> all hope is lost. She has no idea what to do. Now... When it comes to policies, she did do one thing that I approve of, that I think is a good strategy if she actually does want to court over millennial voters. She pledged to raise taxes on billionaires. So Washington Post explains, Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton proposed on Thursday to tax the estates of ultra-rich Americans at a rate as high as 65%, a plan that would apply to only a handful of billionaire families and which comes straight from the campaign playbook of Clinton's former rival, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. Clinton had already proposed to raise estate tax rates on some millionaires to 45%, 
Her new plan goes further. It would add three new brackets, a 50% rate for couples with estates valued above $10 million, a 55% rate for couples with estates above $50 million, and a 65% rate for those with estates above $1 billion. Republican nominee Donald Trump has called for the elimination of the estate tax entirely. Now, for me, that rate would look more like 90% because maybe I'm just too unreasonable, but I think they could afford it. Uh, but this is the right strategy to use. However, the problem is that we can't necessarily believe that you'll go through with this policy, like your free college tuition policy, which I also like because you're only talking about these types of policies now that you desperately want our votes. So why aren't you talking about this all the time? Why should we believe that this is a policy you actually are going to fight for? That's always going to be a problem for Hillary Clinton, no matter what policy she proposes, because look, you should have been doing this from the beginning, but you have a serious trust deficit. So, I mean, because of this trust deficit, it seems like anything she does is a lost cause. I don't necessarily believe that fully. It's not going to work on certain people. You've lost their votes permanently, and there's nothing you can do to earn those votes back. But there is some things that you can do to potentially persuade at least more millennials to come on board. Now, here's how you fix the trust problem that you have and actually make us believe that you're going to be fighting for these progressive policies that you've adopted from Bernie Sanders. I want you to say these things no matter who you're talking to. I don't want you to be one way with conservatives and then be another way with progressives and millennials. Even when Bernie Sanders went to conservative religious universities, he was consistent and talked about the same problems. And you can't propose a policy like free college tuition and then only talk about it when you're trying to court millennials. You have to hammer away with that every single day. But the fact that you keep moving to the right and courting neoconservatives shows that you don't really care about these policies and you're just paying lip service to millennials. So an example is climate change. That is the most important issue to me, hands down. I mean, a close second is getting money out of politics because I think that unless you get money out of politics, these spineless politicians aren't actually going to get any effective climate change legislation so long as they're bought and paid for by the oil and gas industry and the fracking industry. But climate change is really important to me. But Hillary Clinton literally just stopped talking about it as soon as Bernie Sanders endorsed her. The Guardian found that since Sanders endorsed Clinton on July 12th, the full focus of the Clinton campaign has swung to Trump. In 38 speeches since that date, Clinton has mentioned climate change specifically eight times just once in every five public addresses. Stop talking about Trump. We don't want to hear about Trump. Millennials already know he's an idiot. Talk about the issues. Hammer away at climate change. And even though I don't believe that you'll actually do anything about climate change since you take money from fracking companies and oil and gas lobbyists, not doing anything about climate change still gives you the advantage over Donald Trump and makes you exponentially more better than him on this issue because Donald Trump said that he plans on backing out of the Paris Climate Agreement on day one. So even if you get in office and do nothing to stop climate change, we'll still come out better with you than with Trump. Why aren't you talking about this? Why aren't you talking about the fact that 375 scientists, people who millennials respect, like Stephen Hawking, penned an open letter urging people to not vote for Trump. That's how you attack Trump and talk about Trump if you're actually going to be talking about him. But if you stick to the issues, that's how you're going to court millennials. If you remain consistent on these issues and constantly talk about them, that's how you court millennials. Another problem is that even if you talk about these policies nonstop, I can't believe that you'll actually do anything about these policies because why am I supposed to believe that you're going to go against the interests of your donors? So here's what you should do if you want millennial voters. Give back every single penny that you took from them, or at the very least, stop accepting money from them. And I might actually think you're going to be willing to fight for us and not them. Also, if you want millennials, fire people like Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who actually helped ruin Bernie Sanders' campaign. You literally decided to immediately embrace the individual that helped cheat millennials out of the candidate that they loved. Another thing you could do, ditch Tim Kaine. If it's not too late, I don't know if it is, but pick up Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren as your VP. And look, I'll be the first to admit that doing all of these things will not win you over every single millennial because you burnt that bridge. But would you get more people if you did these things right here? Would you get more millennials if you did these things? 
Yeah, I think you would. I think you'd get a lot more. Not all of them, but a lot more. So if you really are serious about courting millennials over and stopping them from voting for Gary Johnson or Jill Stein, take my advice. <laughs>